While the new SpongeBob series Camp Coral is an exciting fresh take on the characters we love, if you watch closely, this show is packed with callbacks to classic SpongeBob moments. Some are pretty obvious, and others are harder to catch. So we thought it'd be a good idea to break down that first episode and find all those little hidden Easter eggs and details. So let's dive in. Off to summer camp. Okay, so off the bat, we see that this show still has the DNA of the original, right from the new theme song. Just like the original theme song, Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Spongebob It incorporates a choir of kids singing about Spongebob. SpongeBob. And Mr. it gives Tom. us a few shots of familiar elements. Like how you can see Mrs. Puff being a sort of different kind of boating instructor. And you could spot a young bubble bass and Kevin C. Cucumber while Squidward pitches his tent. Finally, we reach the title screen, which has a few references of its own, like these pineapple carvings that frame the camp itself. Maybe these pineapples from his childhood are what inspired SpongeBob to live in a pineapple later in life. Then we see what looks like a camp version of the nautical flags that'll one day hang outside the Krusty Krab and in Mr. Krabs' office. And of course, we hear that iconic tune from the original SpongeBob opening. But while in the original that tune was more flute-like because of how SpongeBob played his nose like a flute, <laughs> this time around, it sounds like multiple people whistling. Like a group of campers whistling a tune during activities. Next, we get our first heroic look at a young SpongeBob. While he doesn't look too different from before, we see that instead of his iconic red tie, he has a similar red neckerchief. And he sports a ball cap instead of his crusty crab hat. He's also wearing this silver watch with no numbers or hands on it. Not sure what that's about, but maybe we'll find out in a future episode. Moving on, we get a glimpse inside SpongeBob's bunk. He's got a mini version of his famously disruptive foghorn alarm clock. A poster of his idol Mermaid Man on the wall. By the power of Neptune! And a couple of cans of Squidward's favorite, canned bread. Maybe he's stocking up because he knows canned bread will apparently be hard to come by in the future? I bet they won't have. <sighs> Wow, they have it! Canned bread! The camera then pulls out, revealing even more pineapples. And this jar of what looks like it could be mayonnaise. Probably used by Patrick as a musical instrument. Is mayonnaise an instrument? No, Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. Patrick? And Patrick sleeps on the underside of his bed here, the same way he'll eventually sleep on the underside of his rock in the future. Except for the times when he just doesn't. After we're introduced to young versions of Sandy, Squidward, Mr. Krabs, and little baby Pearl, we find Larry training some eager young campers. And among them, you'll find the famous Craig Mamilton. Craig Mamilton? The tannest man on TV? <laughs> None other. Already looking tan as ever. Next, we see SpongeBob absorb all the water in the shower until it shoots out of all his pores. And if that imagery looks familiar, it's because it's the same thing we see in the opening of every episode of the original show. Okay, then we're introduced to Plankton, and we see that he has this towel with the same color and pattern as one of his relatives from the episode Plankton's Army. Maybe it's a Plankton thing? Are we overthinking it? Okay, fine, probably, but uh, it's still cool. Next, SpongeBob and Patrick already annoy Squidward during jellyfishing lessons. Which could explain why Squidward hates jellyfishing so much as an adult. Good morning, Squidward! Wanna go jellyfishing? <laughs> and the way Squidward licks his lips before blowing his whistle <laughs> is probably why SpongeBob would one day think that's what he's supposed to do before playing Squidward's clarinet. Gross. And of course, shenanigans follow, and we find out that Perch Perkins is here as well, still delivering the news. As Rookie Squarepants attempts to net his first ever jellyfish. Sort of. Mrs. Puff is seen supervising a child who is clearly painting a picture of Gary the Snail. And Plankton references his college fund. Hey, that's my college fund. Which, despite how empty this jar is now, will apparently pay off 
because as future Plankton never lets us forget, I went to college! So, kind of discouraged by his lack of jellyfishing skills, SpongeBob looks to Squidward for advice, but really only ends up interrupting his lawn chair relaxation time. SpongeBob, not figures. A bit of foreshadowing to how often that'll happen when they become next door neighbors in the future. SpongeBob. And of course, Squidward's not very helpful anyways. So Patrick suggests, How about we bulldoze the camp, stomp on it, and chop it to pieces and eat it? I think it's kind of funny that Patrick thinks removing the camp altogether will solve the problem, since we know one day he'll have a similar idea with the entire town of Bikini Bottom. We should take Bikini Bottom and push it somewhere else. Okay, maybe I'm overthinking that one too, maybe. So instead of destroying and eating the camp, they come up with a plan to dress Squidward up as a fake jellyfish to encourage SpongeBob. And of course, it goes terribly wrong. Patrick and Sandy have got to stop dressing people up as animals. It always results in that person getting attacked by some sort of angry creature. Luckily, SpongeBob's able to use bubble blowing to save the day. Technique he must remember in the future because he uses it when he runs into danger while jellyfishing. And I gotta point out that when a bunch of campers get bubble soap in their eyes, one of them yells. I think that's gotta be a subtle nod to Fred the fish who's always yelling. And no, I'm not overthinking that one. Just, just let me have this. So the events earn SpongeBob his hilariously specific saving a counselor from a monster badge, which depicts Mr. Krabs himself being saved from a monster and prompts Sandy to ask the question we're all asking. Why is there a saving a counselor from a monster badge? Like, how often does that happen here? Great question, Sandy. Maybe we'll find out exactly how often that happens in the upcoming Camp Coral episodes. But regardless, along the way, we'll be right there with you to keep diving deep and finding all those Easter eggs, hidden jokes, and references to classic episodes that you might have missed. Until next time, campers.